Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I will show you how to adjust the suspension of the Yamaha Tenere 700. The Yamaha Tenere 700 has a quite a lot uh, suspension travel. The suspension travel rear is 200 mm and at the front the suspension travel is 210. Before you are going to adjust the dampening of the suspension, you should always check that the sag of the bike is correct. And uh, what is the sag? The sag is how much the bike drops down on its uh, own suspension from fully unloaded. Without the rider, we call that sag the free sag. And with the rider, fully equipped with all the gear, uh, we call that the rider sag. So as a thumb of rule, the free sag, the sag uh, of the bike on its own weight, should be about 10% of the total travel of the suspension. <clears throat> And uh, the rider sag should be, as a thumb of rule, about 30% of the to total uh, suspension travel. And uh, let us now start with the rear. The rear is, uh, tra travel suspension is 200 millimeters. And that means that the bike should drop down 2 centimeters from fully unloaded. Uh, and it should drop down 60 millimeters. Uh, when you are sitting on the bike with all your riding gear. So before you are starting to adjust the compression and rebound damping of the bike, you should check that the sag is correct. And now I will show you how to measure the sag and uh, what preload of the spring you maybe should start with. So now let us look into that and later I will show you how to adjust the dampening of the suspension. First at the rear and then at the front. Okay, so I have placed uh, the bike on my motorcycle lifter. The the uh, bike is uh, fully lifted off the ground, the rear wheel is free to run. And then I take a measurement, for example here at the top of the rear axle and up vertically up to a measurement point here. So that uh, you can do it for example like this. Note the measurement from a point you select here vertically up from the rear axle and note that measurement. Then you uh, remove the lifter and uh, you let the bike sit on its own weight on the suspension and then you make a re-measurement to the between the same points <clears throat> and the difference between those two measurements is the free sag of the bike. Then you may uh, ask a friend to uh, hold the bike in a vertical position when you sit on it with all your gear and make a new measurement from the same point here at the rear axle and up to the same point here. And the difference <coughs> between the measurement you did when the bike was on the lifter and the measurement you do when you sit on the bike with all your gear, that is the rider sag. When doing the sag measurements, you should uh, start with a preload on the preload adjuster. And that is the black wheel here on the damper unit. And uh, the manual of the bike recommends 
10 clicks from fully anti-clockwise. So turn the wheel all the way anti-clockwise until it stops and dial in 10 clicks before you start the measurement. If you have to dial in a lot of preload to get the sag correct, the rear spring is probably too weak for your weight and then you should uh, replace the spring with a spring with a higher spring uh, rate. My weight is about 90 kilograms uh, with all my gear and uh, I had to dial in a lot of preload to, to get the rider sag correct. So uh, I have replaced the rear spring. And now I have just to dial in two clicks of preload to get the rider sag correct. One, two clicks. And that means uh, that if I now uh, load the bike with a pillion rider uh, and or a lot of luggage, I have a lot of preload to dial in to get the uh, correct sag. So that was the sag adjustment on the rear. So now let us also look at the sag adjustment at the front. So here at the front the suspension travel is 210 mm and the free sag should be 10% and that is uh, 21 millimeter. And the rider sag should be 30% of 210 and that is uh, 63 millimeters. So you should measure that and if the sag is a lot more, the spring rate uh, is too soft <clears throat> and then you should dial in preload. But there are no preload adjusters on this bike. So uh, you have either to live with the sag you get or buy some aftermarket uh, preload adjusters. And those aftermarket preload adjusters replaces this cap here on the to top of the, the fork uh, legs on each side. I have measured uh, the sag on this bike uh, for my weight and the sag is about correct. So I don't think I will do anything with the sag uh, on the front. The sag has to be correct bef before you are starting to adjust the dampening of the suspension the rebound and compression damping. Now I will show you how to adjust both the compression damping and the rebound damping of the suspension front and rear. So now let us start with the rear. Before we start to adjust the uh, suspension dampening, I will have to explain you what types of damping this uh, suspension on this bike has. And it has two adjustments and that is compression damping and rebound damping. And it has those uh, adjustments both for the rear suspension and the front suspension. The compression damping is how fast the spring compresses when you hit a pothole or ride over a bump in the road. And the rebound damping is how fast the spring retracts again after it has been compressed. So I will show you how to adjust those two uh, dampenings. I will also show you a table of different symptoms so that you can adjust uh, the compression and or rebound damping uh, after what type of symptoms your bike has when you are riding it. I always recommend you to start with the recommended settings from the manufacturer of the bike. 
So when I show you the settings, uh, I recommend you to start with the recommended settings and then look into the table of symptoms when you are adjusting. And don't make large adjustments uh, at a time, just small adjustments, ride the bike, is it okay now? Is it the same symptom? Should I dial in more of compression or rebound damping? So now let us start with the rear compression and rebound dampening adjustment. Let's start with the compression damping and the compression damping is the adjuster on the top of the shock. And if you are turning this adjuster in the clockwise direction, the the suspension gets harder, it's more compression damping, and when you're turning, turning it in the anti-clockwise direction, the suspension gets softer. So uh, when adjusting uh, this for the first time, you should set it in the factory recommended settings, which is 15 clicks out from the hardest. So the, you should turn this until it stops and then count 15 clicks back. You may turn it um, 18 clicks, which is the softest setting. The rebound adju damping adjustment on the rear shock is uh, done on the adjuster here at the bottom of the, the shock. And the same here as the compression damping, it is uh, more damping when you are turning this adjuster in the clockwise direction and less damping when you turn it in the anti-clockwise direction. You should start to turn the adjuster all the way in the clockwise direction and then count clicks uh, in the soft way. And uh, you may adjust it. Uh, 23 clicks in total and the factory standard is uh, 13 clicks. Okay, we have uh, moved to the front suspension and the adjuster for the rebound damping is here on the top of the fork leg and sh you should adjust it uh, uh, equally much on both fork legs. The adjuster for the rebound damping is that little adjuster here. And uh, same as the rear, you have a lot uh, damping if you are turning the adjuster in this direction. And you ha have less or softer dampening if you are turning this knob in the anti-clockwise direction. So when you are adjusting this, turn the adjuster all the way clockwise and then count clicks in the anti-clockwise direction. You may turn the adjuster uh, 31 clicks in total and the standard setting is uh, 17 clicks in the soft direction. So now let us look at the compression damping of the fork. The compression damping is hidden under a rubber protection at the bottom of each uh, fork leg. So you should first uh, use a very small uh, flat screwdriver and peel out that rubber protector which uh, looks like, like this. And then there is a adjuster, just uh, looking the same as on the top. And here also, the compression damping is uh, hardest when you turn the adjuster in the clockwise direction and uh, softest when you turn the uh, adjuster all the way in anti-clockwise direction. And there should be a total of <coughs> 
22 clicks and standard click is 11 clicks in the uh, anti-clockwise direction from the hardest which is fully in the clockwise direction. Don't uh, forget to put back the rubber protector. And you should do the same adjustment on both sides. That was the suspension adjustment of the Yamaha Tenere 700. When you have uh, the correct sag and adjusted the suspension to the factory recommended settings, you should take the bike out for a ride on different surfaces and then consult the table you will find at the end of this video to uh, adjust for uh, different types of bad behaviors. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.